Hello everyone and welcome to Pentecost Sunday. Um, so today what I want to look at is not just the passage in Acts that specifically deals with the day of Pentecost, but I also want to look at some Old Testament passages that to me really relate well with what happened on Pentecost Sunday. And so as we go, what you may want to do is hit the pause button after I call out a passage of scripture, uh, scripture reference, and then find that scripture reference, hit the play button and pick up uh, where I'm reading and read along with me and then you can go through, flow through with the message as we go. So just kind of be prepared and hit that pause button as I, as I call out a reference, find it, and then pick right back up where you left off. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna hit three passages in the Old Testament and then we'll jump into the passage in Acts that specifically references Pentecost Sunday. So the first passage we're gonna look at is Isaiah chapter six and we're gonna look at verses four through eight. That's Isaiah chapter six, verses four through eight. And here's what it says. It says, and the foundations of the thresholds trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was filling with smoke. Then I said, woe is me for I am ruined because I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew in, flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it and said behold this has touched your lips and your iniquity is taken away and your sin is forgiven then i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us then i said here am i send me isaiah's lips were unclean and so but with isaiah's lips being unclean he felt unworthy of god's message he felt unworthy to deliver god's message but God cleansed his lips. He cleansed the lips of Isaiah to make him worthy of the message that God wanted him to deliver. Do you sometimes feel unclean, too sinful to deliver God's message? My challenge to you this morning is to allow God to cleanse you. Allow God to cleanse you of whatever sins is, is preventing you or that you feel like are preventing you from being able to deliver God's message. Maybe you're sitting around in church some days and you're going, well, God, we're all sinners. Why would you call anybody to deliver your message? God will call whomever he pleases. And even if it's you as a person of unclean lips or you and a group of people of unclean lips, God will cleanse you in that calling. But I want you to be prepared for something. Because as you notice, the seraphim used hot coal to cleanse Isaiah's lips. So that cleansing may not be pleasant, but it will be necessary for you to deliver God's message. The next passage I want to look at is Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. That's Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. And it says here, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Alas, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, because I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, because everywhere I send you, you shall go. And all that I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See that I have anointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Jeremiah was young and unsecure of his speaking ability. I can relate to Jeremiah. And in fact, Jeremiah is one of my favorite passages, favorite stories in the Bible, because I can relate to Jeremiah. God started calling me into ministry when I was 16 years old. And I fought that calling for several months. In fact, I, I was about halfway through being 17 years old when I finally accepted the call that God had placed on my life. And I had very similar responses that Jeremiah had. God, I'm too young. God, nobody wants to listen to a 16-year-old. 
At the time God was calling me into ministry, I had a horrible fear of public speaking. I would literally get nauseous anytime I was asked to speak in front of a class or in front of a group of people. I had that terrible, terrible fear of public speaking. So I'm having these conversations with God. I'm saying, God, I'm too young to do this. I don't want to talk in public. Nobody wants to listen to anything a teenager, a 16-year-old, 17-year-old has to say. God, please find somebody else to do this. And, and similar to Jeremiah, God said, don't worry, Chris. I'll put my words on your lips. I'll take care of, of the speaking part. And just like Jeremiah did, God anointed his lips and gave him the words. So we can all make an excuse for why we're not qualified to deliver God's message. Whatever excuse you want to come up with. And we all have them. God, I'm too young. God, I'm too afraid of public speaking. God, I'm too sinful. But excuses fall under three categories. You either just don't want to, it's not important enough to you, which basically is saying God's not important enough to you, or most likely you're just too afraid. Whatever your excuse is, it's not gonna work with God because God will take away whatever fears you have. And if this falls down to your desire, then that can be fixed by increasing and improving your relationship with God. So when God calls us, he will anoint us and give us the words that he wants us to speak. Next passage you want to look at, Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. And, and, he's, and Ezekiel is a very interesting, one of my favorite stories in the Bible too, uh, just the, the story of Ezekiel and what all happens with Ezekiel. So we're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, and kind of see what goes on with this one. It says, Then he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go. Speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he fed me this scroll. He said to me, Son of man, feed your stomach and fill your body with this scroll which I am giving you. Then I ate it. And it was sweet as honey in my mouth. Then he said to me, Son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words to them. So first you have the cleansing in Isaiah, cleansing of the lips. Then in, in Jeremiah, you see the anointing, God placing his hands on the lips and anointing his lips. And now you have a devouring of the word. See, God instructed Ezekiel to eat and consume his word. And when Ezekiel ate that, he found God's word not only to be sustaining, not only did he find sustenance in God's word, he found God's word to be satisfying. He found it to be tasty. In fact, he said it was sweet as honey. And so when you're when you're anointed and when you're appointed and you're cleansed and you're anointed you will not only find god's word to be filling but you'll also find it to be desirable you also find it to be sweet tasting and god's word once you've had once you have that cleansing you have that anointing you will find a craving for god's word and if you're finding god's word to be bitter sometimes god's word can be a bitter pill to swallow when those times happen, check your cleansing, check your anointing, because something's not right there, and you got to get those two fixed and figured out. Let God let God fix and figure those out for you, and then you can go back to God's word being sweet and God's word being tasty. So if we're to deliver God's message, though, we must first consume his word. Get in the word. Get in the study. Study God's word on a regular basis. Grab that craving for God's word then you can deliver his message like he wants you to. And again, once you're cleansed and once you're anointing, anointed, you will find God's word to be sweet to the taste. So now let's move into Acts. Day of Pentecost. It says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues 
as of the as of fire disturbing themselves and they rested on each one of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit was giving them utterance have you noticed the pattern yet every passage we've read so far involves god going directly to the mouth with a purpose isaiah touched isaiah's lips with with hot coals to cleanse and purify his lips. Jeremiah, God places his hand on the lips of Jeremiah, anointing his mouth, anointing his lips, and placing his word on Jeremiah's lips. Ezekiel, God takes the scroll, God takes his word, feeds it, hand feeds it to Ezekiel. and says, consume my word so that you can deliver my message to the people. And then you fast forward into Acts. After Jesus is already death burial resurrection he's ascended into heaven he sends down the holy spirit but when he sends down the holy spirit he sends down tongues of fire tongues of fire to allow the disciples to spread god's message to spread the gospel across to the nations so that they all can hear god's word in their own language Pentecost Sunday is a reminder to each of us that God's commands come with a promise. See, when God gives you a commandment, he gives you a command with a promise that he will take care of everything that is needed to fulfill that commandment. When God's telling you to go, when God's telling you, telling you to share his word, God's giving you that commandment with a promise that I'll take care of the vessel. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of the deliverance. All you have to do is be willing to go. So as I close with this, I, I want to remind you that as God calls you for a purpose, as we look at Pentecost Sunday, and we look at the purpose of the disciples, we look at the purpose that God gives to all of us, which is to go and share the message, go and share the gospel. As God calls you, he will do these four things. He will cleanse you and purify you. He will anoint you. He will feed you his word. And it's going to be sweet. Once he cleanses you and anoints you, that word's going to be sweet to the taste. And you're going to enjoy consuming that word. And then he will make you capable of speaking his message in a way that people understand. See, one of the big issues we always have, one of the big excuses we always give is, well, God, what if they don't understand my message? What if I can't relate to them? See, when that cleansing, that anointing, and that consuming happens, God will then change your perspective. And he will give you a perspective and he will give you a message that they will understand. Because God won't change them to receive the presentation, he'll change you to deliver the presentation that'll fit them. So allow God to cleanse you, allow God to anoint you, consume God's word, let him feed it to you. And it's gonna taste so sweet once you're cleansed and anointed, it's gonna taste so sweet and so tasty to, the, to consume God's word. And then allow God to provide you with the tools to present that word that message so that the people that you're delivering to will understand because you're going to have to get to know those people to understand how to deliver that message and that's part of that cleansing and anointing and consuming is being able to to spread god's message to the people in a way that they can understand it and that's the whole purpose of pentecost it's the whole message of pentecost is to allow god to transform you to place his word in your mouth in such a way that it fits the ears of the people receiving that message. So allow God to cleanse you, allow God to anoint you, consume God's word, and then share his message so that the people around you can understand it. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for all that you do for us. God, I thank you for the message and the, and the, and the purpose of Pentecost. God, remind us that your commands come with a promise. Your commands come with an assurance 
that you're going to take care of the vessel used to deliver your message. God, that you're going to cleanse us, anoint us. You're going to feed us your word. And you're going to speak through us your message in the language that the people around us can understand it. God, as you call each and every one of us, help us to get rid of the excuses. Help us turn those excuses over to you so that you can take those excuses and turn them into, into cleansing and into anointing. God, that you can take our excuses and turn it into skill sets. God, because you always equip the calling. And God, I ask that you would, for each and every one of us, that you would equip us to share your message in the way you want it delivered, in the way that the people around us will receive it openly and understand it. In Jesus' name, amen.